of stuck here. The cops won't bother me. Hey guys, this is my XR650R. It is probably one of my favorite motorcycles ever made by Honda. Honda's made some amazing bikes, but I am not really like a fanboy of Honda, but this is an amazing bike. And I think a lot of people mistake it for a 650L, but it's not. It's a completely di different bike. I kind of wish that Honda would name it a little bit different. But I wanted to take you over a little bit about this bike. So this bike makes about the same horsepower that my V-Strom made, but with one cylinder and it is so much lighter so the power to weight ratio is incredibly high on it and you might be thinking why even get an XR650R in 2020 well the first thing is that these engines are much more reliable than a CRF450 and I was considering a CRF450 but the problem is they're generally more expensive and they require a little bit more maintenance and I've heard of those bikes having many more problems compared to these. It's not that CRF 450 is a bad bike, but when it comes to reliability and durability, there's a reason these bikes are still around from the year 2000. That's a 20 year old bike that's still being abused out in single tracks and on the highways and in supermoto form. This bike currently sits as a supermoto and as a supermoto, I've, this is the first time I've had one of these in supermoto form and I am very surprised how good it is, how fun it is. It's probably by far the most fun bike I have ever had. And you know, I liked my XR650R before in dirt wheels. I thought it was incredibly fun to ride, but with the supermoto wheels it feels like you're going into corners and you have so much ground clearance, you can just keep leaning the bike. I have yet to really use the power of this bike. It's a 650, but it's not a 650 for beginners. It's not one of these bikes that you get if you're learning to ride. It can get you in serious trouble. You know, you can get a V-Strom 650 and it's gonna be one of these bikes that you can learn to ride because it doesn't create that much power. But the problem with this is that it is just so incredibly torquey and powerful. You know, Honda made this to replace the XR600. The XR600 is another super great bike and I've never even ridden one, but I've heard great things about its reliability. The interesting thing about the 650R is that it's a water cool, it's a liquid cooled and it's got the oil in the frame. It's also got an aluminum frame. So it's a very different platform than the 650L. And of course, it's got this. That's a Kickstarter. And that's right, there is no electric start on this bike. This bike weighs 277 pounds. That's extremely light for a road bike. But there are a couple aspects of this bike. For example, you can ride this on the road or you can ride this in the dirt. And the bike operates very different in both. Of course, a lot of these XR650Rs in the used marketplace have been street legal. This one's street legal. And at first when I got my XR650, I had to get it legalized because it was a dirt bike. It comes as a dirt bike, off-road only, but a lot of people converted them to street and there is a process for it. You know, first you have to get the kit. And a, this one's got a Baja Designs kit and the kit itself is like $800. So that is a very expensive part all its own. So the good thing about the XR650R is that it's been street legal. Most of these have been street legal over the years. And installing it is a little bit difficult because you have to run all of these wires everywhere. And then in Maryland where I live near DC, I had to take it into the state troopers for inspection when I got this running. So after that, I was given a certificate and with that certificate, I had to get another inspection. And it was a regular inspection for cars, and that's what I had to do. I had to get it inspected after the state trooper inspected it. Then I had to get it titled. So the process of this was very expensive and very time consuming. So that is one of the reasons you might want to consider the XR650R over the CRF450. 
Now I have like ridden with CRF 450s and I've ridden a CRF 450 in the dirt and the bike actually creates similar power. Not similar powers, like on paper the CRF does create similar power compared to this, but the way the power on this is so much different. It's got much more torque and it feels torquier. On paper it does not seem like it creates a, a huge amount of power over the CRF but when you ride it and I think it's a lot more evident in the street the CRF feels faster but this feels like torquier it feels like a tractor so uh, if you like the long stroke 650s this is probably the last open class CR, uh, XR650 with a long stroke um, thumper and it's incredibly fun you know this is one of these bikes that you get if you just want to have fun and you can ride it on single tracks guys off-road them all the time most of these bikes have been concentrated on the west coast this bike is perfect for the west coast of the united states because it's like an open class top speed sort of dirt bike made for open roads but i've ridden with a lot of guys on xr 650s and in the East Coast, this bike will do every single track, every single trail that a smaller bike will. It just requires a better rider. And riding this thing off-road requires a different sort of technique. Normally when you ride the 250 off-road, you can kind of pick your lines a little bit better, I think. It's a little bit more maneuverable. But with this sort of bike, what you have to do is just give it gas and the bike actually like does all the work for you. You just kind of have to hang on. And it's a little bit of an odd sort of feeling because if you're riding on gravel and you're riding on like big boulders, the bike just like kind of goes. You just have to like keep your hands on the handlebars and hope that you don't get thrown off. But the people that ride this, I do have a lot of respect for them because it's such a big bike and it's such a big powerful bike that it requires a lot of skill to ride correctly and you do see a segment of off-road riders that prefer these very large bikes because they're much more comfortable they have so much more torque you can ride them in almost like any single gear off-road and you're fine but what i like about this current setup is the dual sport supermoto aspect of it in supermoto form I don't know of a lot of bikes that are the equivalent because you can get a KTM Supermoto 640, 6 whatever it is, 690 and it's not going to be as good as this and I'm talking more about durability. KTM makes like really incredible bikes but the ones I've ridden they have so much vibration, they're very uncomfortable and this is a comfortable Supermoto with a very smooth motor by Honda that's extremely durable. And that's what I like about it. It's that this bike gives you a lot of fun and it gives you a lot of fun for very little money. You can get one of these XR650s possibly with Supermoto wheels, CRF450 front end for like $5,000. And I think over the long run, I think this still is a much better bike. At least it's a better bike for me. Um, I do wish that Honda would bring back the XR650R in the form of a CRF650R or L that's been dual sported, liquid cooled, it's got the electric start and fuel injection. That would really change the game. I don't see the point of even having the 650L in there because um, I wish they would make it a little bit better. The Honda 650L is still air cooled. It's a great bike but I think they need something like this. They need to bring back the big red pig. If you see the trends on Honda, they do bring back bikes that were popular at one point. You know, they brought back the Honda Africa Twin. They bring back the Honda Monkey, and they just start like building these little segments because they do realize that they kind of build a small niche for riders and for drivers, and they eventually stop the production either because there's not enough of them sold but also they bring it back because i think it builds this nostalgia for the bikes and i think they might bring this back and you can kind of see the trend of motorcycle companies building bigger and bigger bikes and i think 
This was like a, a time when people were building really big bikes and then they started cutting down into smaller bikes and now people are starting to get into bigger bikes again. But I really enjoy this bike. As a dirt rider, this is not a good bike for me because I'm not a very good dirt rider, but on the street, this is a really workable bike. It's a really fun bike. So if you're thinking about getting a supermoto or a dual sport, you might want to consider one of these old big red pigs. I think they make much more sense for riding on the street than a smaller 400 from Honda or Yamaha. I really like this bike and I think if you see my videos where I'm riding this thing, you can see that there's a certain quality to this bike that a lot of motorcycles don't have. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.